Hey everyone, so in this video I'm actually updating the previous tutorial I had made on Soundflower um, based on the comments that I've received. One of the main flaws in my previous tutorial was the fact that you couldn't actually hear the system's audio, whatever was playing on the system, as you recorded it, the audio. Um, so in this tutorial I'll show you how to use aggregate devices as well as the multiple input-output settings that are built into Mac OS X in order to facilitate actually hearing the system's audio as you actually record it, in addition to uh, recording your microphone input as well. So I'm just going to um, show you how to do that. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is actually install Soundflower onto our system. And if you're following the last tutorial, we were using the Soundflower version for Mac OS 10.6, which is quite old as of now, considering that we're on 10.8. So first thing you'll need to do is update your uh, Soundflower installation if you haven't already done so. Since the installation process isn't all that difficult, uh, it just requires clicking some next buttons on your part. I won't really cover that in this tutorial. Okay, so assuming that your Soundflower installation was successful, the next step that we need to take is to open the MIDI window in order to control our input and output devices. To do so, type MIDI into the Spotlight panel, search, and click on the Audio MIDI Setup. If nothing shows up for you, uh, what you can do is then go to Windows, which is located in the taskbar at the top, and click the Show Audio Window. In my case, the window is already open, so it says Hide Audio Window. But if I close it, it says Show Audio Window. I clicked the wrong one. Oh, there we go. Show Audio Window. So once I click on that, it'll show me all my input and output devices. And at the moment, which devices are set to the current device. Um, so right now the built-in microphone is set as a current input device and on the other hand the built-in output which is my built-in speakers in the MacBook are set as a uh, default output device uh, so I can control the volume of my speakers um, since they are the default device at the moment. What we need to do is we need to create a multi-output device as well as an aggregate device which I've already created but I'll remove them both so we can start from scratch. Okay, so the first step we're going to take is to make an aggregate input device. An aggregate input device tells OS X that, hey, I want to record from multiple sources, my microphone as well as the system audio. So I click the plus button and create an aggregate device. And now that that's created, the next step is to use our built-in microphone as a source for the audio, as well as a Soundflower 2 channel, which will be our system audio, since Soundflower captures the system audio. Next, we also want to create a multiple output device. A multiple output device tells OS X that, hey, I want to use multiple devices to you know, output um, the audio that our system is playing to. So I'll use in my built-in uh, output, which is my speaker or headphone, as well as a Soundflower 2 channel. At this point in time, you might be wondering what a multiple output device is, as well as what an aggregate device is. Uh, in OS X, a multiple output device basically tells the system that we want to uh, output our information that the system is playing, whatever it may be, a game or a video or anything. Um, we want to output it to these sources. So in my case, we want to output it to the built-in output, which is our speaker, as well as the Soundflower 2 channel, which is you know, our installed program that captures the system's audio. So the next step is to create an aggregate device. An aggregate device tells the system that this is where we want to take input into. What sources do we want to take input from? So one source would be our Soundflower 2 channel, which is receiving the output from our system uh, because we use that as a multiple output device. And the second source is our built-in microphone. So we can record our voice as well as the system audio since Soundflower was one of our outputs in the multiple output device. After creating the aggregate device as well as the multi-output device, what we need to do is to set them as defaults so that our system can utilize them. To do this, basically right-click on the device and then use the device for sound output or for input. In our case, we'll set the aggregate device for sound input and we'll set the multi-output device as for the output, the default output. So I'm going to right-click on the aggregate device and use it as a sound input since this is where we want to record our information from, right? Because this is where the built-in microphone as well as the Soundflower 2 channel are used as input. What you'll notice now is that once the aggregate device and the multi-output device is set as default for the system, you actually won't be able to control the audio. I'll show you later on how, how you can decrease or in, 
uh, increase the audio of your speakers as well as the system audio that's being captured. Uh, but for now, don't worry about using the toggle that's on the top navigation bar of OS X. The next step is to actually open up QuickTime Player and to make sure the aggregate device is being used for recording purposes as the input. So in my case, the aggregate device is being used as a default input. You can't really see my QuickTime Player for some reason um, while it's recording the screen, but we just verified that it was being used by clicking the down arrow on the bottom right side of QuickTime Player. At this point in time, you should be ready to record your system's audio, record your voice, and at the same time, hear what the system is playing. Now, if you wanted to revert back to your original settings, right-click on the built-in microphone, and then set that as a default input device, and then click on your built-in output and set that as the output device. And that will bring you right back to the default settings that your OS X uses. And you'll be able to hear things as usual and record things through your uh, microphone as usual, if you do that. At this point in time, I'll show you a quick demonstration of the material that was covered in this lesson, as well as how to control the sound volume of your speakers, as well as your Soundflower device when using the aggregate devices. Controlling the level of sound that's output to your speakers or to the Soundflower 2 channel device can be done by clicking on the multi output device, uh, the arrow right beside it, and then clicking on the built in output. And then you can actually change the left and right channel's um, levels as you can see I'm doing in the video. Now you can do the same thing for Soundflower as well and that will also change you know, the level of sound that the Soundflower device receives. Um, that would be important if you actually wanted to decrease the volume of the Soundflower device in order to bring out your own uh, volume through your microphone. So I'll just click on the Soundflower device and then again I can change the left channel as well as the right channel just as I could for the built-in output which is my speakers or my headphone. And that's really all there is to actually changing the uh, level of volume for each device. There's not really much that you can do with built-in uh, microphone. You can also change the level of you know audio for your microphone and all that stuff. But yeah, that's essentially how you use the um, MIDI audio devices panel in OS X. Okay, so I'll just demonstrate what I showed you before um, working on my laptop. I'm going to record some system audio as well as my microphone, um, the audio that I'm inputting from there. And at the same time, listening to the audio being outputted by my system uh, through my headphones. Now, it's important that you use a headphone or something sim like, you know, some other item that doesn't output audio to the speakers because otherwise you'll have interference because the audio that your device is outputting is going to get picked up by a microphone and then it'll loop over and over and yeah it just won't sound good so make sure you're hearing your system's output through like a headphone or something just so that your microphone doesn't pick up that output um, so to demonstrate I'm gonna use my old video and I will be recording the system audio using my own voice that's on this video and so if we go into this uh, let me focus in okay I've already set the aggregate device as my microphone as you can see right there and Soundflower 2 channel is set in as one of the inputs as well as my built-in microphone is set in the, into the other input. So I explained to you that process before, how to do that. Um, and the second thing you want to make sure is that your multi-output device is set as the default output, your sound output. And once again, I have built-in output, which is my speakers, or in this case, my headphones, which are plugged into my output for my laptop. So it's talking about that. That's one of the outputs. And the other output is Soundflower 2 channel. So it'll be feeding the audio that's playing in the video through Soundflower as well as my speaker. And then this audio will get picked up because Soundflower is one of the outputs. And then it's also an input in the aggregate device. It'll get picked up and then we can record it using QuickTime or another software. So without much more to say, I'm actually gonna record something. Okay, so I'm gonna open QuickTime um, and then go over to new screen recording which is under files and now 
it's already set as aggregate device um, so I don't need to change anything there because we've already set it as default from over here uh, the default input is aggregate device which is why it's already checked in over there so if you can I'm gonna uh, okay so you can see that uh, it's picking up my voice right now as I speak the microphone that's built into my laptop and at the same time, I'm going to stop talking and I'll play the video. And you'll see that the bar over here, I'm sorry, why is it so blurry? Okay, so as you can see, there's a faint bar right there that's moving as I talk. Even when I'm not talking, but I'm playing a video. So I'm going to play this video. And I'll plug my headphones in so my mic doesn't pick it up. Okay. So I'm not talking anymore and you can see that it's going to move regardless of whether I'm talking or not. And that's how we know that um, what we've set up is working. So I'm actually going to record now. Um, okay. So I'm going to click on the record button. And just click here I guess. And it's going to start recording. So it's actually recording my voice right now, as well as a system audio. And at the same time, I can hear what I'm saying in the video as well. So, let, um, so whatever I'm speaking right now is being recorded. And you, here, I'll go over to my headphones. Once you've clicked on our setup, you'll notice that initially, we have the speaker icon at the built-in output. See, so I can hear what I'm saying as well at the same time as it's recording the system's audio as well as my mic input. So all these things are being recorded at the same time as well as outputting on the headphones, which is what most of the comments in my last video were asking for, how to accomplish that. So let me stop recording now and play back what I've just recorded. So I'm gonna pause this video. Okay, so go over to my QuickTime. This is the video. I'm gonna take off my headphone jack as well so you can hear everything. Um, my voice right now as well as a system audio and at the same time I can hear what I'm saying in the video as well so let, um, so whatever I'm speaking right now is being recorded and on your setup okay I'll go over to my headphones once you click on audio setup you'll notice that initially we have the speaker icon at the built-in output see so I can hear what I'm saying as well at the same time as it's recording the system audio as well as my mic input. So all these things are being recorded at the same time as well as outputting on the headphones, which is what most of the comments in my last video were asking for, how to accomplish that. So let me stop yeah. recording. So it works. Um, I hope this video helped you out. And yeah, that's all for now. Please leave a comment or you know like the video and Please subscribe to my channel. Um, all these things help me out immensely. And if you have any future ideas for other tutorials that I should make, please leave the ideas in the comments. I would really appreciate them. Um, and yeah, until next time, thank you for watching the video and I hope you enjoyed it.